All right, in this video, I'm gonna cover RT60 targets and what happens if you miss them. Hi everybody, my name is Matthew Pose with Pose Acoustics. And in this video, I'm gonna cover RT60 targets, what they are, what they mean, and what happens if you miss the target. When we design rooms, we often design rooms with an RT60 target in mind. What that means is that there's a particular RT60 for a given sized room that we think is gonna sound best. A lot of you have heard us talk about 0.3 seconds or 300 milliseconds to 0.35 seconds or 350 milliseconds. That's a common target for average sized rooms. That actually isn't the target you would use in every room. As the room gets smaller, you go to a lower target. So in a room that's only, let's say, 150, 200 square feet, probably we would actually shoot for between 0.28 and 0.3 seconds, something a little bit on the lower end. 350, 400 square feet, probably 0.3 to 0.35. Five, 600 square feet, we might actually go up to 0.4 seconds. That might be okay. Even 0.45 seconds could be okay if you get to the larger rooms. 2,000 square feet, the size of many people's homes, right? Probably at least half a second. Commercial cinemas are not 0.35 seconds, for instance. They're actually quite a bit higher. They're probably closer to, I'd say, 0 0.7, 750 milliseconds would be pretty common for something like that, possibly even a full second. And, they, and it sounds completely normal and natural. So the point is the actual target, it's a sliding target. It changes depending on the volume of the room. The 0.3 to 0.35 is not like a set correct target. It's just the one that happens to be roughly correct for typical size theaters. So what happens, like in this room, actually this happened. So I'm, that's why I'm bringing this up. You do all the calculations and simulations. You get everything all figured out. You use all the standard formulas and you figure out that your RT60 is going to be correct with a certain square footage of absorption placed around the room and a certain amount of diffusion. You stick that stuff in the room. Now here's what I do. I lay it up against the walls and floor and I measure. Is it right? Looks pretty good. Okay, we're good to go. Let's mount it on the walls. So we did all the calculations said it should be 0.35 seconds. That's what we came at. I put everything in the room and laid it all out and we came in at 0.3 three seconds roughly. It was averaging over a range. It's pretty good. We mounted it on the wall and we came in at 0.28 seconds. What happened? Well, what happened was it got more evenly distributed around the room and the absorption became essentially bigger than it is because of that distribution and it became in a sense more effective. So we, we came in below our target. So you might be saying, well, you're supposed to be an expert. Shouldn't you have known that? Well, I knew it was likely, actually I've had big debates and arguments with some of the experts about how using those calculations is a mistake and you should do everything with these iterative measurements. There's a couple things. First off, in this size room, 0.3 seconds is a good target, meaning 0.28 seconds is pretty darn close. We're not really that far off the target. Two, um, this room was meant to be sort of a test of like, if you calculate everything really carefully, where does it put you? And uh, it, it, it I think reinforce my ideas that I already understood, which was that if you rely too heavily on those calculations, you're probably going to end up being under your target, potentially by a lot, because actually the amount of absorption that's in this room was already substantially less than the calculation said it should be. Um, and then the third thing was what you do about it. So the room actually sounds pretty good as is. I don't think that there's a real issue, but because it's a lab and because I want to use it in a way where I can test these things out, I will be changing some of the absorber panels um, with a panel that absorbs differently. So it's going to be a, a base only bandwidth restricted panel. And I'm going to try to keep the base absorption where it is or actually get it even lower and then get the mid high absorption a little higher so that we can get up to that 0.32 maybe to 0.35 second range that I was kind of hoping to be at while keeping the base range nice and flat. So we'll see how that works. But I would say for most people, that's you don't need to do that. This is just me playing around with some panels to kind of see how they work in different environments and you know, kind of test the you know, theory with reality. But if you did care, you could do what I'm saying. Now, what happens if you go way, way below? I've actually talked about this before. Too much absorption just tends to make the room sound really dry. You have no reverberation. It can actually sound very clean, but the big negative and the reason why I don't recommend doing that is it also exacerbates comb filtering and it makes speakers more localizable in a negative way. So when you're sitting and listening, you can really hear where the sound is coming from instead of feeling like you're in this enveloping environment. Highly reflective rooms make it very hard to tell where the sound is coming from, which for surround stuff is actually a good thing. So we don't really want the room to be too dry. And that's why I like to use diffusion. 
and I like to keep the absorption to the limit of what it needs to be to kind of get into our target range and no lower. It's one of the reasons why I'm actually gonna to try to bring the reverberation range back up is to hear how audible that relatively small shift would actually be. I've treated a lot of rooms, but I don't typically raise and lower the RT60 in those kind of increments and then listen and see what happens. Usually it's a, well, this is what it should be. Let's put it up. Sounds pretty good. We're good to go. And you know, it's, it's your own spaces where you can actually spend that time uh, obsessing. So hopefully that's helpful, helps you understand the RT60. Um, I know some of you have been asking about how to measure RT60. I promise I will get a video for how to do that pretty soon. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. It's not a perfect way, but it's about as good as we got. So thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel and keep getting these videos.